to close this video <laughs> hey guys welcome back to the house of wrinkles bringing you the how-to for english bulldogs and other canine tips and tricks today is our third video in our three-part series of how to care for a newborn litter Today we're going to talk about how to keep your litter warm. Um, this is the most important vital point of keeping a healthy newborn litter. The number one reason that people lose a, a newborn puppy is because it gets cold. Puppies cannot regulate their own body temperature at all. So they depend on their mamas to keep them warm. But when you're raising a litter that is not staying with the mama constantly, it's your job to make sure that those puppies stay warm. Newborn puppies for the first two weeks of their life have to stay in an environment that's at least 85 to 90 degrees warm. Okay, so I'm just going to show y'all our setup. You do not have to set yours up this way, but this is just how we did it. We have a heating pad underneath this uh, blanket or towel here. And the heating pad has different uh, gauges here. We keep it either on warm or low. Now, that heat source is not what keeps the puppies warm. This thing cuts off every two hours uh, automatically for safety precautions. So if you depended on this heating pad solely, then your puppies will end up getting cold, especially during the night when you're trying to rest in between feedings. Um, it will cut off and you not realize it and then you've got a cold puppy and then you've got an emergency on your hands. So. We use this as just a, a little backup because we have hardwood floors in this area. And so it's, and we're also in a basement where it stays a little bit cooler than like, uh, like in a normal room with carpet or uh, better insulation. So we just use that as a backup. The main heat source that we have is this heat lamp. Now this heat lamp has to be fairly close in order to keep that temperature, the 85 to 90 degrees. And what you ideally want is a space big enough where your puppies can move away from the light if they get too warm, because puppies can actually overheat as well. So it's really, really tedious on how you kind of want to keep their temperature. So they know when they're too warm, but there's nothing they can do when they're too cold. So you have to provide the heat and then give them the space where they can actually crawl away from the heat if they get a little too warm. So what we've noticed is, like there's four corners, you'll see there's a puppy in each corner. The puppies in each corner are still getting a little bit of the heat off this lamp, but they're not laying directly underneath it. Now sometimes the puppies will move to the middle and um, we call sunbathe <laughs> uh, right directly underneath the lamp. That means that they're trying to warm up a little bit. Or sometimes they'll snuggle with each other to try to stay warm. But the importance of this lamp is this. If your puppy's temperature drops below the, the, the range of what it's supposed to be, your, how you can tell is the puppy will become very lethargic. Um, it won't be able to move very much on its own. Uh, won't be able to hold its head up. What happens is when the puppy when the puppy's temperature drops, the um, the sh the sh uh, blood, sh sugar. blood sugar drops as well. And when the blood sugar drops, their heart rate drops, and they can quickly go into a coma and not wake up. So it's an emergency if you notice that your puppy is acting that way. 
Now, there's a difference between a sleepy puppy after it's eight that's not moving much um, than an actual lethargic puppy. How you can tell is a sleepy puppy will still move its head up and some and you'll still get a little wiggle here and there. A completely lethargic puppy will be almost lifeless. If your puppy gets too cold and its blood sugar drops, what you can do is there's a couple of different things. If you have Cairo syrup, which I suggest every breeder to have on hand because it's a lifesaver, um, just a couple of drops will quickly bring that puppy back. Now, if you're a first time breeder and you realize that this, and you're watching this video because you're going through this at the moment, what you can do if you do not have Cairo syrup is you can also use a drop of honey or you can mix up some sugar water. You would boil the water really good, mix the sugar in, let it cool off. I don't suggest that way just simply because it's gonna take a while and time is of an essence with this situation. Um, so my suggestion is to really have the Cairo syrup on hand. But like I said, if you don't, you, do, you can do the sugar water. It doesn't work as quickly and um, as effectively as the Cairo, but it does help and it, and it can save your puppy's life. In closing, we just wanna thank everyone for watching and we also wanna wish a good luck to all of the new breeders out there. And we just wanna to say too that if you have any questions, just drop us a comment. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. We've, we wanna help you as much as we can. If you have any questions or concerns, we're here. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of our future videos. Give us a thumbs up if something in this video helped you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, just keep following our journey. We're gonna have so many more how-tos to share with you guys. Thanks again. <laughs> Something's wrong. Yeah. Probably that smell where she pooed it and it smells terrible. Mm. It needs to go to the bathroom. I know.